Здравствуйте! Доброе утро! Добрый день! Меня зовут Вера Алексеевна Полякова Норвуд. Добро пожаловать на урок русского языка! Итак, мы изучаем русский язык. На уроке мы говорим по-русски, читаем по-русски, и вы уже хорошо понимаете по-русски. You already understand Russian well. Вы уже хорошо понимаете по-русски. During our previous lesson, we talked about languages, countries and nationalities. Let us very quickly review the three countries that we learned a lot of stuff about. We will concentrate our attention on the United States, Russia and France. Sha, Russia and Francia. Let's talk about who lives in those countries, what languages are spoken there, and how do we identify people's nationality. And you remember that when it comes to nationality, we have a special word for a man, a special word for a woman, and then a plural word that represents that represents a group. Well, let's begin with Sha. Это Sha. Sha. Кто живет в Sha? В Sha живут американцы. В Sha живут американцы. Американцы. Americans, I hope you remember that plural word. Американцы живут в США. А на каком языке? What language? На каком языке они говорят? Американцы говорят по-английски. Американцы говорят по английски. So let's look at the nationality words for США. Американец, американка, американцы. During our previous lesson we talked about Джон и Мэри. Джон, американец, Мэри, американка. Джон и Мэри – американцы. Они говорят по-английски. Американцы говорят по-английски. And what is the name of the capital of this country? Let's take a look at this. Вашингтон. Washington, and I want you to say the the name of the city after me in Russian. Washington, and you start on the V sound, not the W sound. Washington, Washington. Хорошо, хорошо. Итак, мы знаем что we know that мы знаем что в США живут американцы. Они говорят по-английски. А кто живет во Франции? Посмотрите, пожалуйста. Now let's look at this. Это Франция. Франция. Это Франция. А кто живет во Франции? The French people, right? Во Франции живут французы. Французы. А на каком языке? What language? На каком языке они говорят? Они говорят по-французски. Они говорят по французски. So let's take a look at these words. 
Франция. Он француз. Она француженка. Они французы. So our nationality words for this country are француз, француженка, французы. And we know that the French people speak French. Французы говорят по-французски. Французы говорят по-французски. When you were doing your homework exercise, you were writing sentences about Jean и Marie. Jean – француз, а Marie – француженка. А они французы. Они живут во Франции. Они говорят по-французски. По-французски. In that same homework exercise, you came across the name of this city, the capital of France. Париж. Париж. That's how we pronounce it the Russian way. Париж. Это Париж. And our textbook characters or our exercise characters, Jean и Marie, живут в Париже. They live in Paris. Jean и Marie живут в Париже. Они французы. Они говорят по-французски. Ну, хорошо, хорошо. And this country is called Россия. Россия. Это Россия. А кто живет в России? The Russian people. Русские. В России живут русские. А на каком языке они говорят? What language do they speak? На каком языке они говорят? Они говорят по-русски. Они говорят по-русски. And let's look at our nationality words for Russia. Да? Русский, русская. Русские. Again, I want you to notice that nationality words are genderized. Иван Иванович – русский. Анна Петровна – русская. Они – русские. Хорошо. Мы знаем, что Иван Иванович – русский. Анна Петровна – русская. Нина – Русская, Максим, русский, они, русские. Они живут в России, они говорят по-русски. And what is the capital of Russia? Москва, Москва. Это Москва. Ну, хорошо. So, let's write down the names of the capitals of these three countries that we have just discussed. So, let's begin with Москва. This would be the easiest word for us. You have already written it so many times. Москва. Москва. Париж. Paris, the capital of which country? France, Francia. Paris, Paris. And now let's write this down. Washington. That's a long one. Washington. Washington. 
in the middle of this word we pronounce the K sound Washington Washington Now let's read all the three words. Everybody after me please. Moskva Paris Washington No, хорошо. Хорошо. So we talked a lot about who lives where. And uh, I want you to do the following exercise. I want you to complete these sentences expressing who lives in which country. So let's begin. Let's look at this. Please complete the sentences explaining to me who lives in these countries. All you have to do is write down three words telling me who lives in these countries. Ну, хорошо. So let's go over the answers. Во Франции живут французы. В США живут американцы. В России живут русские. So the French people live in France. Americans live in the USA. And the Russian people live in Russia. That's what the sentences say. In your notebooks you are supposed to have just these three words that I underlined. Французы, Американцы, Русские. Now let's read the sentences. Please read after me. Во Франции живут Французы. В США живут Американцы. В России живут русские. Хорошо. Хорошо. So you know who lives where, but how about who speaks which language? Again, I want you to complete a few sentences expressing the languages that these people speak. All you have to do is write down the names of languages. So let's look at this exercise. Complete the sentences expressing the languages that these people speak. No? Хорошо. Хорошо. Since this was a very easy exercise, I hope that you are already finished. So, французы говорят по-французски. The French people speak French. Американцы говорят по-английски. Americans speak English. Русские говорят по-русски. And the Russian people speak Russian. Let's read the sentences together. Французы говорят по-французски. Американцы говорят по-английски. Русские говорят по-русски. Хорошо. Хорошо.
Итак, мы изучаем русский язык. На уроке мы говорим и читаем по-русски. Вы уже хорошо понимаете по-русски. Вы уже немного знаете русский язык. Ну, прекрасно. So we have been talking about французы, американцы, русские. And these are plural nouns. What other plural nouns do you know? We talked about дети и родители, children and parents. And these words are plural. We talked about сувениры. When we were studying the Russian alphabet, we learned the word фрукты. And remember when we were learning about different clothes, we talked about брюки, туфли, and things in general. Вещи. All of you are школьники. And uh, maybe very soon, very soon, you will become студенты, college students or university students. So we already know a few plural nouns. Well, let's take a look at some of the words that we know in their plural forms. Французы, американцы, сувениры, вещи, вруки. Now look at the endings that are highlighted for you. Each of these nouns carries a plural ending. So what are the plural endings in the Russian language? И and и. That's right. И and и are the basic plural endings. Now, what, when do we use the E ending? And when do we add the E ending on a noun to make it plural? The rules are coming up. So, let's take a look at this. Formation of plurals. The basic plural ending for masculine and feminine nouns is и. Студент, студенты. Школа, школы. Журнал, журналы. So the basic plural ending for masculine and feminine nouns is и. Студент, студенты. Школа, школы, журнал, журналы. Okay, well, let's, let me give you more examples. Телевизор. Телевизоры. If you have more than one telephone, телефоны. Компьютер. Компьютеры. And if there's more than one car, Машины. The basic plural ending for masculine and feminine nouns is и. И. But you know, not everything is quite as simple as that. Sometimes we have the ending и. И. What? When do we use that one? And for this, we have another rule. If the stem of the noun ends in к, г, х, ч, ша, ща, or the soft sign, the soft ending e is added. Now you need to write down these letters. К, г, х, ч, ша, Ща and the soft sign. And as you are writing these letters down, make them big so that they really stand out. К, Г, Х, Ч, Ша, Ща. Soft sign. 
And if the stem of the noun ends in any of these letters, the soft ending E is added. Kniga, knigi. Look at that letter G in the word kniga. Vrach, vrachi. Urok. The letter K tells us to use the soft ending. Uroki. And straitel ends in the soft sign. So the plural form is straiteli. Construction workers. Straiteli. So the letters that we need to watch out for are K, G, H, Ch, Sha, Sha, and the soft sign. No? Arasha. Arasha. So, Ruchka, Ruch, Ki, Ruch, Ki, Kniga, and if I have more than one, Kniggi, Uchebnik, Uchebnik, and now I have Uchebni Ki, Uchebni Ki. So we really have to be careful with those letters. K, G, H, Ch, Sh, Sh, and the soft sign. So now you know everything we need to know about masculine and feminine nouns. But what is left out? The neuter nouns. Let's look at this. The plural endings for neuter nouns are a and ya. Pismo, pisma. Akno, a window. Okna. Uprajnenie, exercise. Uprajnenie. So as you can see, the letter O changes to A and the letter Ye changes to Ya. So the plural endings for neuter nouns are A and Ya. Pisma, Okna, Uprajnenia. Arasho. Arasho. So, Pismo, and now I have more than one, Pisma. Pisma. The, new, the neuter nouns, if we use them in the plural form, take the endings a or ya. And during our lessons, we do a lot of exercises. Uprajnenia. Uprajnenia. And now, after you have learned so many endings, let me show you this. This is a piece of good news. Bold words do not change their forms. Paito always stays paito. Singular or plural, it's paito. It's a bold word. Nitro always stays the same. And radio doesn't change either. Singular or plural, it's always radio. Bold words, words of the foreign origin, do not change their forms. They always stay the same. Palto, Nitro, Radio. No? Хорошо. Хорошо. Well, we did learn a lot. But now we are going to practice and you will see how easy it is to be guided by those rules. You just have to know the rules. So let's look at this. Gazeta. What would be the plural form? Ga, zia, ti. We just added the regular e ending. Huh? Journal. The plural form is jour, na, li. Just the regular ending. The next word is ruchka. Ruchka. Now, in the stem, we find one of those letters that we need to watch out for. And we know that we need to use the soft ending, ruch, ki. That's because of the letter ka. Pismo. 
is a new to noun. It ends in O. So what is the plural ending for the new to nouns? A. Pisma. Engineer. What would be the plural form here? In. Je. Ne. Ri. Engineery. Just the regular E ending. Engineery. Now, vrach. Be careful now. Vrachi. We are using the soft ending because of the letter CHE. Vrachi. Gazeti, journali, ruchki, pisma, ingenieri, vrachi. Well, let's continue. And our next word is institute. So when we have more than one, what do we say? Ins, ti, tu, ti. Instituti. Uprajnenie is a new noun that ends in ye. So what do we always do in class? Uprajnenia. Uprajnenia. The next one is akno. It's a new noun ending in o. So if you have windows in your classroom, you have ok na. And now straitel. Straitel. Stra i te. Be careful because there's the soft sign right here. Straite li. Straite li. So there are a lot of things, a lot of вещи on my desk. There are ручки, карандаши, письма, книги, газеты, газеты, учебники. Учебники и сувениры. Сувениры. Ну, хорошо. I certainly want you to keep on practicing with the formation of plurals. So, right away, start working on those additional exercises. Review the rules that we learned during today's lesson. And at home, take your textbook, find урок номер пять. Урок номер пять. And in your workbook, in your workbook, on page 56, work on sentences 1 through 10. 1 through 10. Well, review notes taken in class. And uh, practice with formation of plurals. That's our current very important topic. Formation of plurals. Go over those rules. Итак, большое спасибо и до свидания.